James Spanner. Dick Spanner. Private investigator. I just closed my last case, which ended in one hell of a fight. Now I was about to take off on another assignment. They didn't use no plane. You were fired. By cannon. What a way to fly. That's how come I landed here. The suntan chick softened my fall. Now that's no way to treat a lady. I'd landed in one piece, but I was bushed. I was back in the big pair and decided to head for my office. The city was sleeping. Things were quiet. Too quiet. But don't like that. There's no gas. Ah, shut your face! The jerk was smoking. That could ruin his health. I took the elevator to a couple of floors above my office and walked down. Right, another story. But you already heard it. I knew something was wrong when I noticed the door was ajar. The jam jar was jammed in the damn door jam. It wouldn't shift. Wait a second here. The office was a mess. What sort of fruitcake would pull a caper like this? And why? Strawberry. I was in a real jam. Then I saw the writing on a wall. It was a writ. You are hereby sued by my client, Two Tall Johnson, for loss of height. Then there was a whole spiel of legal double talk. I needed a drink. Two Tall Johnson. I didn't even know the dude. But all that was about to change. The guy was really upset. He said he used to be eight foot three. Now he was three foot eight. He brought along his kid brother, tall Tim too. He was eight foot three. The long and short of it was, we decided to hit the nearest bar. Too tall ordered a highball. What could I say? Tall Tim too wanted a short. I settled for a rusty nail. They told me they worked in the movies, the stuntmen. That is until Too Tall got stunted by a very pressing elevator. It seemed they owned a pet parrot, but the bird had flown. They said they dropped a writ if I helped find their feathered freak. I told them I'd sleep on it. All this strawberry jam was giving me the pip, but I still had the damn writ hanging over my head. So I figured I'd take the case. A guy was fixing the suntan chick. She'd been badly busted. They tell me on a clear day, you can see the Ivy Wood Hills. That's where I was heading. The Are You Okay Tower? The Japanese Groman Theater? The Brown Trilby? The Ivy Wood Basin? The corner of Sunrise and Grape? Movie City. Timbuktu, remember that one? When the chick says to the piano player, 
Encore, Samuel. What a tearjerker. But I was here in a case. I arranged to meet Too Tall under the big W. I'd wait in an hour, but the bum hadn't shown. I was about to leave when it hit me. Jumpin' Jehoshaphat. I was being delivered by letter. But where? All I could say was, oh, 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 oh. I could be in trouble here. The letter I was in didn't have no address. <laughs> Road hard. <laughs> what a way to take a seat. Then I noticed these legs. They were a matched pair. When I finally got to the face, I saw it was none other than Gloria Vamp, sex symbol and legend in her own byline. Now she was a recluse. Also, she didn't see no one. She'd been a big star in silent movies, but the talkies had killed her career. When she opened her mouth, on the one, she was calling her man Friday, except it was Tuesday. He was wearing a monkey suit, but I could see he was a gorilla. He was serving high tea, including a pot of jam. She said she wanted to be alone. Also, the gorilla looked like he was ready to go ape. So I made some lame excuse and headed out of there. But I figured I'd sneak back and case the joint later. I noticed the jam was strawberry. See you later, boss. That's a tongue of... Uh, come on, here, little Mickey. Uh, here you go. That same evening, I hit Sunrise Strip. Things were starting to buzz. I'd arranged to meet Too Tall Tim at the Brown Trilby. There it was, the in place. So, I went in. The hat check girl had checked my hat. I gave her a tip. Lucky dip on the first race at Wellment. The group was playing a catchy tune in the dark. Over in the corner, Douglas Sandbanks Jr. and Hair Oil Flynn were cutting a rug. Damn! In a Swiss joint like this, they kept the lining low and the price is high. Too Tall was sitting alone. I joined him. Hey man, come in, take a seat. I asked him to tell me more about the missing parrot. He said the bird came from some Mediterranean island named Malta. Too tall wasn't making much sense. He'd already drunk himself under the table. It was around that time someone put the finger on me. It belonged to George Lifebug. He said we were leaving. I didn't argue, especially when I saw who was backing him up. Edward G. Hobson. They take me to the top of the R-U-O-K tower. It was then I decided to call their bluff. I told them I figured the finger wasn't loaded. How long can a private eye be? Edward G. Hobson told me to hand over the parrot or take a walk. I told them I didn't have the feathered freak. George Lifebot said, you dirty rat, which was way out of character, and I was getting pretty edgy. Edward G. told me I had a choice. Right, it was Hobson's choice. So, I made another dumb move. I jumped. 
I was walking all right, on air. Then I remembered these anti-gravity pills I'd won in a crap game. Jumpin' Jehosipher, my old stuffed moose head. I hadn't seen that for years. What a way to drop in on Movie City. One thing for sure, I was about to make a big impact. The ground was coming up fast. Looked like a pool. I was about to make a big splash. The pool was empty. I felt pretty drained myself. But I'd had a lucky break. I'd landed on my head. Now I couldn't get the damn thing off. It was Gloria Vamp's place of residence. And there she was, with Eric Von Strongbow and a pot of strawberry jam. Gloria must have heard my surprise. When she spotted the moose head, she started yelling, Green Murder. She was colorblind. I figured it was about time to make tracks. Gloria was still screaming her head off. When Von Strongbow turned around, there was something familiar about him. I decided to head back to the big pair. I needed time to think. The city was sleeping. Things were quiet. Too quiet. I got to remember it was the hunting season. Jumping Jehoshaphat. These nuts wanted my head on their wall. Then I was caught smacking the beams. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Made my eyes water. Panned out it was a patrol car from the 16th precinct. So, I was back in the old fuzz palace. But at least I'd managed to lose my head. O'Grady was grilling the moose. I settled for a snack. I didn't much care for grilled moose. I asked the lieutenant what the charge was. He said two bits for the pie, the coffee was on the station house. O'Grady was losing his cool. Then he went hopping mad. When he picked up the pie, I figured I knew exactly what he had in mind. I was right. It was custody. Two years in the slammer. This was the big one. Sing Song Penitentiary. It's Cell Block 8. It's two in the morning. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Up here the singing was off key. I was on tone deaf row. The guy in the cage with me was a 300-pound lush. He was trying to dry out. Dry it out. was driving him up the wall. It's driving me up the wall. He told me he planned to break out of the joint. Out of joint. That's when I made another dumb move. I decided to go along with a jerk. That slob must have had help on the outside. It looked like a good scam. The lush got lowered to the ground. Nice touchdown. So far, the plan had worked out like a dream. But all that was about to change. What was going down here? Not yours personally. Let it go, you dumbo jumbo. Jumping Jehoshaphat. What the hell was this? Too much weight in a damn crate. Uh-oh. Look out. 
Hell's bells. I was taking another nosedive. So what else is new? There was only one thing left to do. I need help! There was one chance. The build-your-own hand glider kit that I'd traded for a working model of Niagara Falls. Jumpin' Jehoshaphat. A set of two dumb dumbbells. It made sense. The crate and yours personally now balanced out. It was still one hell of a drop, which left me hanging on in there, I guess. One of the bulls had spotted me. He yelled to me to get him up high or he'd start pumping lead. Some choice. The guard broke my fall. I broke his leg and a couple of arms. The lush was back on his feet, but not for long. I wanted to help, but I saw he was boxed in. I hated to leave a mess, but it was time I got out of there fast. I knew O'Grady would have put out an A, B, P, C, D on me. That's like an APB, only longer. But I needed a couple of files from my office. I figured the fuzz would be watching the elevator, so I took the stairs. On the other hand, they might figure out the way I was figuring and cover the stairs. Maybe I should have used the elevator. Then again, the fuzz might figure a double bluff, and I'd figure out the way they figured I was figuring. That meant they'd be watching the stairs. Or was it the elevator? Maybe I was going stair crazy. It'd been a hard climb. I was sweating like a pig. Then I froze. A figure was standing in the doorway. And what a figure. It was May East. May said she wanted to come back up with me to Ivywood to try and break into the movies. She planned to change her name, call herself May South, give her career a new direction. I said, okay, but she'd have to take the rough with a smooth. So, we went back up to Ivywood. Shame, one of the all-time greats. Remember the closing scene when the cowboy rides off into the sunset and the kid calls after him, come back, you creep. Not a dry eye in the house. But I was here on business. Tall Tim, too, wanted to see me. I'd arranged to meet him at the, whatchamacallit? Yeah, the Ivywood Basin. The music buffs Mecca. Even the graffiti had class. Then I heard something. I figured it had to be Tall Tim, too. Yeah, wrong again. It was George Lifeboat and Edward G. Hobson. Edward G. said he was on to me, see? And I was a dirty, no good fink, see? And he was going to take care of me, see? I thought about making a run for it. But George Lifeboat pulled his finger out. I'd seen that deadly digit in action before. I was about to be railroaded. What a way to go. Hell's bells, it was pearl black. We were both in trouble here. Unless I could get that damn thingamajig out of my damn pocket. Jumpin' Jehoshaphat, a sack of whatchamacallits. I couldn't believe it. It was night, at this time of day. I figured I must be losing my marbles. Pearl Black was doing all the hollering, but I was going to get it first. Ha, 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 ha. There wasn't a damn thing I could do. I just hoped May wouldn't take it too hard. 
At least it would be quick. It sounded like an express. What the hell was going on here? Someone had turned on the light. The daylight. Jumping Jehoshaphat. It was Eric von Strongbow, producer, director, and agent of the stars. He looked kind of familiar. It was late in the day, but it was beginning to dawn on me. They were shooting a motion picture. The smart ass I couldn't place was lighting. Wild man Carew was handling sound. I'd been set up, but why? <laughs> Eric von Strongbow had invited me back to his place of business. He said he liked the way I acted scared. He asked me to take a seat. I said I'd prefer to stand. I could see the man handle some of the top names in Ivywood. Claude Squalls, little Shirley Pimple. They were all up there. Von Strongbow told me he'd like to represent me, but I'd have to lose some height. He recommended I go on a special diet. I could drop four or five inches inside a month. A jar a day keeps the tolls away, that's how he put it. Hell's bells! It was strawberry jam. I said I'd consider his offer. Another dumb move. But I was still bugged by how come suddenly it went dark out there. Von Strongbow said that was simple. It had been shooting day for night. I finally caught up with Too Tall Tim at the Brown Trilby. It was a hot night. The girl had checked my coat. Yeah, the joint was really swinging. Louie Headstrong and his hot five were playing behind the brown door. Too Tall was trying to pay his tab, but he was a little short. Hey, it was Gary Barrelmaker. Played the marshal in High Midnight. Yep. And a couple of gorillas trying him for size. I guess he didn't measure up. Hell's bells. He'd been thrown out of the place. I asked the animal why. Smalls only. No talls allowed. A couple of bottles later, I was back out on the street. I had a hundred answers, but no questions. All that Too Tall would say was to follow my nose. I didn't like the smell of that. But what else could I do? Then I got this feeling. I decided to check around to make sure I was alone. Hey, this is weird. What? I'm sure I... Nah. For a moment, I thought I was being tailed by a mysterious cloaked figure. It must have been the booze. Great movie. It reminded me of a hunch I'd been working on. I decided to follow it up. which led me to this roof. It was pretty dark, but there was something down there. That's when I heard it. Jumpin' Jehoshaphat! It was a mysterious cloaked figure unzipping his cover. The smart ass looked like something out of a four-penny opera. Schmuck the knife, looked ready to start cutting. Yeah, you guessed it. Another case of the falls. But maybe, just one time, my luck would be in. Jumping Jehoshaphat. Nailed by my own hammer. By the looks of what was coming up, I could be in for a cracking time. Yep, I was on a real downer and about to hit the roof again. Oh, 
The joint I dropped into panned out to be a laundry. But they weren't starching those shirts. They were laundering money. A couple of goons were doing the washing. One was in a real leather. He was foaming at the mouth. I thought about trying to soft soap him, but I knew it wouldn't wash. I could see these animals might give me trouble. To this day, I still can't figure out how the hell I did that. Then I made my next move. I got out of there, fast. What I didn't know was, the press had seen everything. Spanner, hammers, washers, and bolts. I'd made the front page in the big pair of times, but it put Lieutenant O'Grady back on my trail. May South, as she now called herself, had found us a new place to stay. It was nothing like my office, and it had one drawback. Noisy neighbors in the pad above. What do they do up there? May reckoned I was in bad shape. So she'd broken out my old fighting red leotard. I told her if my day worked out, I'd work out later. She was a sweet kid, but she was starting lunch. I left. It was a dog's dinner. Back out on the street, a couple of swingers were taking the air. There's a new one on me. With Spencer Gable and Betty Crawford. What a cast. It was a note wrapped in a ruck. It said, a group of talls would like to meet with you. Signed, Johnny Weisfella. P.S. Follow the call of the jungle. The call of the jungle. That could be it. I was still following the ah. Uh, 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 and there was again. He was coming from the house. It was Gloria Vamp's place of residence. Spooky. People were moving out there in the dark. I was starting to get the scares. Then I saw them. Some of the giants of Ivywood. Jack Pants, the baddie from Shame. Gary Barrelmaker. Randolph Spot. Yeah, remember him? Lark Cable. Johnny Wisefella. Douglas Sandbanks Jr. Tony Suss? They were all here. The guy in the end told me, get off my milk and eat my horse. How stupid can you get? But Nobody argues with John Rain. They told me the Smalls were taking over Movie City. Eric Von Strongbow was the mastermind. The one chance to stop him was the Maltese parrot. The bird held a secret to... Hell's bells. The secret to what? Now I might never find out. Hell's bells. Now I was jammed in a jumbo jam jar. I'd been pickled in my time. Now I was about to be bottled.
When I finally made it out of the underground jam factory, I found myself in the corner of Sunrise and Grape. Hey, one of the all-time biggies. Remember the end when the hero says, Franklin, my dear, I don't care if you are a man. They just don't write stuff that good today. It was late. I needed a drink. Some little squirt was giving me lip. I figured that covered it. Night had fallen and I was still looking for that drink. But things had changed at the Brown Trilby. To get into the bar, you had to get under the bar. Tall Tim, too, had problems. The ape gave him the blackjack right behind the ear. Tall Tim, too, was laid out. Now he was carried out. I'd made it under the bar. What the goons didn't realize, under the coat, I was walking on my knees. The place was jumping. It was a wild scene. Edward G. Hobson and George Lifeboat were throwing a party through a plate glass window. Some crazy cat was doing his thing in the corner. I got the message. Tomorrow, they'd all be eating strawberry jam. Jerk was smoking the hard way. Maybe now you'd kick the habit. Strawberry vodka. Why not? I told the barman to hit me. Another dumb move. When I came around, I thought I was back in the big pair. But it was me. She'd found me in some alley. Then I saw she'd been crying buckets. She tried to break into the movies, done the round of all the agents, but they'd given her the bird. She told me she was leaving. She left it at that. Well, when one door shuts, another door closes. Then I saw it. May had said she'd been given a bird. Could it be? Jumpin' Jehosopher, the elusive Maltese parrot. Ba -ba -wa 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 I questioned the feathered freak for over an hour. But this bird was no stool pigeon. I needed to talk to May, who was trying to make some fast moves. I caught up with May at the airport. She was flying back down to the big pair. She changed her dress, also her mind. Now she wanted to stay. But I told her the plain truth. She had to get on that plane. She had to forget me. Because when you get right down to it, what was really important was her in the future. Anything else didn't amount to a hell of beans. She had to forget me, forget she ever knew me. I recall I reminded her to remember that. Nothing else amounted to anything when you got right down to it. Forget me, forget the past, forget the hill of beans. This could be the start of yet another dumb move. Bye, big boy. It was the start of another day in Movie City. The people in the pad above woke me at dawn. Hell's bells, what went on up there? Then I got this feeling. Someone moving in the shadows. Huh? Am 
must be getting edgy. Now I was finding my red leotard. I decided to take it along. I might be able to work in a workout later in the day. So, I was back out pounding the sidewalk. What I needed was transportation. Harry Hurts. It sounded like the right place. I could see Harry through the window. I decided to step inside. I asked Harry about the hollering coming in through the wall. He said it used to be a speakeasy. Now you had to yell hard to make yourself heard. It was a squash club, all right. There had to be an easier way to lose height. Movie City had gone crazy. The smalls were in. The talls were out on the seat of their pants. Had me some wheels now, but it was tough going. Well, Grady was still on my tail, and he was not checking out the way I'd parked. It was around that time I decided to drop in at Jim's gym. Another dumb move. While man Carew was planning a comeback, he was doing a little shadow boxing. <laughs> when will that dumb Dimbo ever learn? I figured I'd skip the skipping. Mm, the old parallel bars. Why not? Gary Barrelmaker and Johnny Weisfeller. What the hell were they doing behind bars? Then I was in trouble. Big trouble. I'd been hoisted by my own leotard. Help! Yeah, it was the bridge on the river cry. I'd been hanging around quite some time like a day and a half. Edward G. Hobson and George Lifeboat were throwing questions at me. Name the seven smalls. I yelled up, Lumpy, Dumpy, and Humpy. Five out of seven wasn't bad going, but they wouldn't buy it. Edward G. started tearing his hair out. George Lifeboat flipped. That's when they gave me the chop. It was another heavy case of the drops. I always seemed to lose out on the hand in the pocket deal, but I figured I'd give it one last throw. Jumping Jehoshaphat, my old Zippo miniature parachute. Now let's see now. Count to ten and pull a Zippo Ripple cord. No sweat. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was getting there, seven, eight, hey, my lucky number. Yet another dumb move. Why is it yours personally is always the fall guy? Lucky break, the river was dry. I could have drowned here. Then I saw him, Sam Silverwind, one of the all-time great Ivywood producers. I could see he'd fallen on hard times. He told me he'd passed a lot of water under the bridge. What could I say? I felt kind of sorry for the old guy, but it was time to move. Sam and I made our way to the famous Japanese Gromont Theater, a place where the stars left their mark in concrete. They were all here. Snozzle Ferranti had left his nose print. Clara Blow, the original It Girl. Hey. And the Invisible Man. It was all too much for Sam. He was coming apart at the seams. I left him to it. Stage right. 
I heard later the man went to pieces. Tough break. The shame was sleeping. Apart from some wild party, he's throwing a wild party. It was around that time I smelled Flatfoot. So I made my move. It was late, but I needed a drink and a lot of answers. Brum, 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 brum. So I drove down to this strip joint. What else on Sunrise Strip? I parked my hired wheels and I headed on in. <laughs> Hell's bells! Big Bertha was none other than May East. I thought she'd left town. I found out later her plane never took off. Ran into a hill of beans. I'd seen enough. I made for the bar. The barman looked kind of familiar. I told him to give me a shot. <laughs> How dumb can another dumb move be? May had a degree in welding. It came in handy. She'd taken me back to the apartment, removed the slug, and patched me up. Felt pretty good. I told a feathered freak to button its beak. May looked ready to work on my nuts. But I needed to get back out on the streets. I told her the way things were going down, not to wait up. Shut it, bird brain. Then I saw him. It was that sneaky Lieutenant O'Grady. So, I slipped into this alley. Grady had me cold. They'd taken me down to the Ivywood Station House. I'd been in a hundred grill rooms in a hundred cities. This one was different. Oh, Grady looked ready to fry me. So I figured I'd give him the whole story. From the beginning. I told him it all started when I found a jumbo jam jar jammed in the damn door jam. And that ain't easy to see. But it soon panned out, two tall Tim and tall Tim two were suing me. But the brothers agreed to drop the writ if I located the Maltese parrot. I could see O'Grady was interested, so I told him more. About how I came up to Ivywood, movie city. And that every place I went, 
I ran into strawberry jam. I said I even found the place they made this stuff. By this time, O'Grady was all ears. He told me to go on. So I filled him in on the special diet to lose height. A jar a day keeps the talls away. I went on to tell him about the laundered money and the fact that the Smalls had taken over Movie City. I could see the lieutenant was hooked. So I gave him the bottom line. The man behind the whole scam was Eric Von Strongbow. He said he'd give me 12 hours to wrap up the case. But first he wanted to see the Maltese parent. Jumping Jehoshaphat, the bird had flown. I asked May if he'd left a forwarding address. She said no, but there was a message. It was written with a quill, and what a stupid way to spell burn. I needed help to nail Eric Von Strongbow. So I'd called a meeting of the Tolls. I told them to hold their heads high. Don't let the Smalls walk all over them. I wasn't about to fall for that old hole in the floor scan twice. Then I took out my personal bowling ball. Just as I figured, false pins, a small and tall's clothing. I asked her for the whereabouts of Eric Von Strongbow. She told me the MGM GM studio. Metal, Greenberg, Marrow, Gold Lucian Mayor. Me and the Talls would hit the place at dawn. I can't see anything. Ow! It was exactly 8 a.m. Yours personally and a group of Talls were about to hit the studios. Eric Von Strongbow had just started shooting on the big stage. I told Tony Suff to creep inside and scut around. Okay, Chief. He was the biggest creep we had among us. Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't believe it. They were making Ben-Hur meets Flash Gordon on the Forbidden Planet. I still can't see anything. Hey, you, she? Honey Sufts was in trouble. I told the Talls, let's go get him. Hell's bells. The man needed help. His kneecaps were taking a beating. I told Hair Oil Flynn to get over there. Okay, yeah. That's when I caught a rock. Smack on top of the head. Ben Him took off on his motorized chariot. It was Edward G. Hobson. She. He said he was the Emperor Ming. See. She. From the planet Mongo. See. She. I let him have the old one three. It was George Lifeboat. He was playing Flash Gordon. Look at this. But what the hell did he have under that cloak? The set was coming down around our ears. It was time to move. Telegram for Mr. Spatter. Bizarre. Who said that? Von Strongbow was making his escape. I went for my 45. Come here, you little... Jumpin' Jehoshaphat. It was a uh, whatchamacallit. Telegram for Mr. Spanner. That's when it hit me. I saw the whole scam. Casting smalls in every part, Eric Von Strongbow could use miniature sets. That way, he was able to make movies cheaper than anyone. 
He was making a pile and laundering the money. But where was he stashing all the loot? Uh, getting ready for lunch, and now it's, uh, uh, <laughs> Can for Mr. Hey, what? Gary Barrelmaker last suit of green. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Mr. Spatter, a telegram for you. Bizarre. There it is again. Telegram for... Ah! The winged freak is a tyrodactyl, an extinct giant bird with a silent P. <laughs> Who the hell's that? Telegram for Mr. Spatter. That's me. Bern is the capital of Switzerland. How dumb can a cable be? Hey, Spanner, look what I gets for ya. It was a ray gun, but they hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> Who keeps saying that? It was around that time the roof went up. Me and Von Strongbow hung around for a little while, but not for long. The roof was still going up, but I was about to go down. Then I was grabbed by the talons. The bird was flying me to Switzerland. Burn 874-226 panned out to be a numbered account in a Swiss bank. It had to be worth millions, but that's another story. Bizarre. Who is it keeps saying that? <laughs>